And we're back to the Banjo world. The world of Banjo. It's a nice place, isn't it? Uh, so if the other episodes, if the audio on past episodes didn't sound great, it's because I had the microphone settings all wrong. So hopefully this will sound better. I am joined by my good friend, Mr. Uh, Magner's Irish Cider, mm -hmm. to join me on this little adventure. So, uh, yeah, let's do it. Uh, there should be a thing uh, down here. Hold on. Uh, hold on one second. <sighs> Sorry, I just... Moving makes me tired because I'm a fat piece of shit. Uh, okay, let's go down here. Ooh, did I miss it? Oh, I missed it. Frick. Okay. Let's try that again, shall we? There's a little cavern uh, on that hill that you have to uh, slide into. Uh, okay. Uh, bull? Go to hell. Bam. To bull hell with you. I will poop eggs all over your body. <laughs> a slowly bouncing egg. What's in those eggs? I never understood why eggs are so damaging. Like, in the later games, it makes sense because they introduce, like, new, different kinds of eggs. But, like, normal blue speckled eggs, like, they shouldn't hurt you that much. Eh, whatever. Eggs are life. That is what we learned. Egg, 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 I love you, I love you, really, really love you so. Sorry, Ellie, I was seeing the eggs. I'll send you a link sometime. Okay, um, I'm trying to find that one last uh, mumbo totem token. Uh, I don't remember where it is. This is embarrassing. Um, let's see here. It's gotta be around here somewhere. Uh, I am ready to close by that. I'm ready to close all the crap. Okay. Uh, let's get the front. Okay. There's one more mumbo token. I don't. Oh, wait, I think there's actually one. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Found it. <laughs> For a second, I thought there was one inside the hut itself, but uh, there's not. Sometimes there is, other times there's not. So, yeah, I love Mumbo. Mumbo's a great character. Um, he's actually voiced by the composer of the game, Greg Kirkland, who. Uh, excuse me. I talked to him on Twitter a little while ago. Um, and hopefully, I will meet at MAGFest this year. Tell me a video about that, too, as well. Ah, uh, Banjo has plenty of tokens. Then I'll scroll. And for me, you see Mighty Mumble Magic. Triple M, Mighty Mumble Magic. See this thing. Mumble. Uber. And I am now a termite. Free to change back. Come while ready, ready. Termite. Bit small. Not bad for the first spell. Mumble practice needed. He doesn't even tell me what this tournament is for. <laughs> so, yeah, transformations are another big thing in the Banjo franchise. Game turning into things. Uh, and in this game, there's a few. It is the first game, so I wouldn't expect a whole lot. Um, but in the second game, there are way more transformations and way cooler. Uh, so, number one, uh, Termite. Let's freaking go into this place. I do talk to them, guys. Hey, where'd you get those shorts? I want them. <laughs> wow, termites are jerks. But as termite can climb on any wall, I am the ultimate climbing termite. Whoa. And I can jump apparently. Whee! Oh shit. Give me that cool backpack or else. <laughs> uh, hundred notes. Hell yeah. I'm the best. Okay, uh, up here. Up here. Termites are the greatest climbers. Uh, go to it. Let's do it. I went to Alaska once, so I'll go to the climb really well. Okay. Uh, whoop! And here we are. Top of the anthill. At the top, there is... an extra life. But also, at this spirally top, there is... Oh shit, okay, that was, that was close. There is... this. BAM! SUICIDE! <laughs> Alright, all ten jiggies. Told you we'd do it. You didn't believe. Okay. Oh, right, okay. So, we don't want to go back in there yet. Uh, we can actually leave the level as the termite. And that will come in handy for something. In case you forgot, you probably did, because it was a while ago, and it really draw much attention to it, but uh, a Jiggy appeared on top of the level uh, opening when we hit that Gruntilda switch. So, if you go back now, that is magic stops you taking the notes off the world, but the hundred you just collected counts as your best known score. Yeah, that's another thing that the, the first game had, the second game has on this one. 
the second game puts less emphasis on notes, uh, they're less important, and, they, and they're way easier to get. Uh, Banshee. That's why I need to be a tournament. And I also need I... to... Hey, bro. Uh, okay, so what I was gonna say was, in the second game, notes are way less important. Um, they are only needed to learn moves. Um, they are not needed to open doors. And, which is weird because notes are so important in this game, but they could develop a way to uh, make it so you could take them off world and it would count. Because, as you can see, when we go back into the world, uh, all the notes are now back. All of them. So, and the everything. Everything resets. Except for, like, the, the mumbo totems and uh, the jiggies. Everything resets. Um, I guess because they couldn't figure out a way to make it so they didn't, because this game was so big at the time. Um, but he comes back, meaning I can do this again. Okay, we can, uh, not yet. Okay, one more. Eggs in your gullet. Bam. Oh, come on! Jeez. Oh, fuck my life. Man. Oh, yeah, if you, if you, uh, if they bounce back, it will go to you. you go back. This way. Bam. I'll leave you. You don't get any eggs. Ah. Uh -huh. Okay. So, in the second game, the second game is way bigger. The, the, the worlds were bigger. The overall was way bigger. It was a huge game. Um,. Which is why little, like, eight-year-old me loved it so much. Um, and also they developed ways to make it so things you took off-world remained off-world when you came back. Um, I guess they got better at, at uh, developing games, but I do like that they came up with a reason for why that is. Um, that is that is good That is good thinking on their part. Okay, so I ha I've gotten everything. Hold on real quick. We'll go to View Totals. And in uh, Mumbles Mountain, 100 out of 123 minutes. That's freaking right. Okay. Now, what we gotta do is now we're gonna go up here. And up here, we will see our very first note door. This note door requires 50 notes to open, and we have 100. So, we can easily, easily, easily. No <laughs> problem, musical spells. <laughs> what up, jam jars? <laughs> Cut the musical notes and blah, 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 We've done this already. You don't have to frickin' explain. I'm hitting all the buttons. I can't skip this thing. Blah. All right. Yes, I know bottles. Blah, 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 blah. I have 100 notes. I should be fine. Hey, you. Die. You live to make me sustain myself. And bam, we can now go in there. Beautiful. So yeah, this game is a collect-a-thon, but... It works because, uh, uh, hold on, what was I gonna say? Oh, yeah, because, uh, the game centers around it. The game is designed around collecting things. And this person here, the person nobody likes talking to, and was a pointless character, Brentilda, Brentilda's nicer sister. Clearly the Glinda of the game. Uh, okay, so, she exists, but no one remembers her, no one likes her, she did not need to exist. Uh, she knows all of these disgusting secrets, and she will tell you three of them every time you find me. Do we really need to know this witch's gross secrets? They will help you avoid a fiery fate. Where's B, you like to hear them? Okay, what she is referring to is later on in the game, there is a bullshit segment that everyone is bad at, um, where basically you play a board game of sorts, uh, where each space you land on, you have to fulfill a task. It's near the end of the game, and one of the things you have to do for this for these tasks is uh, answer questions about Grunty here. Uh, questions uh, the answer to you only know if you talk to Brentilda everywhere you see her and write down the answers to remember them because they're different every time. You can't. We don't have the we we back then we didn't have the advantage of the internet, and now we don't have the advantage of the internet because the answers change each time you play you make a new save game. There's no winning. The only way to not die, the only way to, to get these parts right is to 
see her and write down everything she says. I'm probably not going to go through the entire game in this file, so there's no point dying to her, but I'll talk to her as so you can get an example of like what she says. Grunty brushes her rotten teeth with salted slug flavor toothpaste. Oh my god! Okay. Uh, she also washes her hair with engine oil! Oh god! Long of tooth and strong of arm. Grunty's got a new lasting charm. So, that's one thing I like. Grunty always talks to you during the game. She's kind of like Handsome Jack. She always gets to give her two cents. Okay. And she gets her clothes from Saggy Maggie's Boutique. Uh, okay. Alright. Okay. Okay, here is the uh, next jigsaw puzzle for the next game. And... And like this. Why would you want to remove them? That's retarded. Yes, I know bottles. Bam. Okay. Level 2. Treasure Trove Cove. The essential beach level in every game. Alright, let's do this. Uh, okay. Oh, okay, real quick. Let's take a quick trip down here to introduce a new, a, not new, another function of the game. This boy, right here. This guy. Him right there. So, uh, he is not the cauldron in the opening. He is different, but he will help us. You've activated a magic cauldron. Find two of the same color to create a shortcut. Okay, yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, insider. Uh, another thing I like more about... Oh, cool. I like more about uh, the sequel than this game. Uh, this lair is freaking huge. And that's not really a bad thing, per se. It's just... Okay, so... As you progress in the game, there are numerous uh, doors you open and, and th throughout the game. Like, the entire thing is built... It, it, it's one straight, like, line. You know what I'm talking about? Like, it's... Uh, it's not like... Okay, basically, this level's huge, and there's no, like, easy way to get to certain areas unless you've activated all the cauldrons, because that's the easiest way to get around this place. Like, getting to level one, like, getting from the... the getting from the, uh, sorry, I can't articulate right now. Uh, getting from the entrance to the lair to the door that leads to the final, to the, the second to last level in the game can take a, a, a whole lot of time. A whole lot of time, and it's a pain in the ass. So you really need to you need to like memorize where those cauldrons are. Otherwise, it will take you a shitload of time to get from one end of the level to the next, which kind of sucks. And in, in the second in the second game, they created this uh, this system of uh, like tubes and like what do you call it? Like uh, uh, they, they 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 made a better system where you could easily access. Like the, they made they made the overworld bigger, but they made it way more easier to access. So it, it doesn't feel as big as this. Even though it's much bigger. So yeah. Uh, and here we are at Treasure Trove Cove, and we're gonna go there next time. So uh, Wall Crab and Wall Clam will uh, walk you out. Farewell.